On Thursday, in cities across the nation, people gathered to mark National Homeless Persons Memorial Day to honor those who died in 2017 and to call attention to America's ongoing homelessness problem. For decades, cities have been dealing with their homeless populations by simply giving them a bus ticket and sending them out of town. However, what happens to the homeless once they reach the end of the line has rarely been documented. But this week, The Guardian published the results of an 18-month investigation called Bust Out, analyzing more than 34,000 such bus trips. Joining me now from San Francisco is the editor of the story, Alistair G., who's the homelessness editor for The Guardian. Thanks for joining us. Um, first of all, 18 months long, uh, I guess, the, the, what's the summary? What's the thing that you found that was most interesting? Hi, Harry. Thanks so much for having me. Well, we went into this knowing that cities say that these programs, they are a way of resolving homelessness. Cities in their official reports actually say that these bus programs are a, quote, exit from homelessness. And so we wanted to find out if that was actually the case. And we found a much more mixed pictures than, than that top line summary from cities would, would have you believe. We found that, sure, while in some cases this was a really great solution for some people, they ended up reconnecting with family, with friends and finding stability. Others, we found, had simply disappeared. They, their relatives had no more contact with them or they had simply continued being homeless in a different city. One of your data visualizations show is it's almost like musical chairs, that people are being shuttled back and forth across the country. And you also, you found out that here in New York, they're actually buying, in certain cases, plane tickets. Tell us about that. Yeah, that, that was one of uh, by far the more interesting things that we found in, in this database. We made dozens of records requests to cities around the country. And New York was really idiosyncratic in the sense that around 600 people were being sent on sometimes expensive plane journeys across the world. In fact, the longest journey we found from New York was a homeless person traveling to Wellington, New Zealand, of all places. And it also sent around 2,500 people back by plane to Puerto Rico. And so, yeah, if you wanted to, if you wanted to find the most exotic list of destinations, you would definitely look at New York. You also started and kind of ended your story with an individual that was leaving San Francisco. Tell us about him. Quinn was a guy that I met outside San Francisco's Homeward Bound office in the summer. He's a young guy, 27 years old, originally from Indianapolis. And he had been homeless just through a series of what I, would, of what I took to be just unlucky circumstances. He had an early drug conviction that derailed his plans of going into the military, which had been his dream. And so he had ended up several years later in homeless in several Western towns, including San Francisco. And so he was hoping to go back to his hometown of Indianapolis just because he had been exhausted and tired from homeless life in San Francisco. When I saw him, he just looked physically tired. And so I saw him off at the bus station. And then a couple of weeks later, I spoke to him on the phone. Things weren't going so well in Indianapolis. And then almost about a month later after he left, I spoke to him and he said, I'm on a bus back to San Francisco. Uh, things didn't work out in Indianapolis. My friend entered a drug addiction program, the friend that I was staying with, and I just had nowhere to stay. I was homeless again there. And so today, Quinn's situation is, is almost exactly the same as it was before he took, took the bus. He's dragging around a suitcase on broken wheels. He's trying to find poles for a tent that he found to sleep in. And he's living back in San Francisco in almost exactly the same location as he was before he took the ticket. All right, Alistair G., the homelessness editor for The Guardian, joining us from San Francisco today. Thanks so much. Thank you, Harry.